Amen? I sense the love of God in this place. I sense you love the Lord. Jesus. We switched over. Good to go? Good. Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, have chosen the message that's very familiar probably to you, but we can always, always good to be reminded of the familiar. And sometimes it's just refreshing. Uh, we're going to look at the prodigal son and that story. And uh, I believe the Lord has a promise for your uh, children or your loved one that has not yet come into right relationship or once had a relationship with Jesus but needs to come home to, Lord, to the Lord and find uh, that uh, time where they can walk in freedom again. The devil is at hard work, but Jesus is stronger, amen? God has more than the devil has. Just don't buy into the devil's lies. Yes, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus comes to give us life, life more abundant. Remember the prophet of old where he was shown at an army that was surrounding the camp, and the prophet says, look up there, there are more of them than there are of the enemy. Let's just believe that today. God is going to do his work. He's going to build his church. He's going to save your families. He's going to save your loved ones if you claim them for Jesus. And that's what we can do today, claim them for Jesus. You've prayed for them many, many, many times. It doesn't hurt to pray for them one more time. You know what the, Jeremiah read recently is like a hammer that hits the rock. Well, how many times have you hit a rock and it didn't break? Right? It didn't break the first blow, but it took several blows and finally started to crack that thing right, laid right open. The word of God is like a hammer, beating away, chipping away. Some people come easy, some people come hard. But when they come, they come. Praise the Lord. They come hard, but they come. God knows how to reach them, but he's investing in you and I. As we pray together, become an intercessor. Become his hands, his feet, his, his voice, his heart. And so we're looking today at a, a father who is a parable, but it's, about a, it's, a, it's like a real story. It really, a parable has a, it's kind of like an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. And so Jesus often spoke in parables trying to get people to understand the principles of, of heavenly words and meaning. I was blessed to grow up with a, a Christian father and mother. And I say that not, I need to not take that for granted. The older I get, I know how blessed I was. At the time, I didn't maybe recognize it growing up. But the older I get and the older I, you know, dad was smarter than I thought he was. Dad knew where to go when he got down. He'd go to the, he, he, you'd, you'd hear him praising the Lord. Where he was in the mink yard and the farm someplace or in the bedroom. He knew, he knew how to worship. He knew how to, he had, he knew where, what the touch of God was. It impacted his life. When he grew up in his own father, my grandfather experienced revival in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Is where he started out. God moved upon the land, upon peoples that were praying in their houses. They would come together and have prayer meetings all night sometimes. Unbelievable stories. My dad was influenced by that. My dad's brother was influenced by that. My dad's brother came to Aiken to preach evangelistically in a tent, and which he did. And often in those days, 
That's to what they did. They held campaigns. As a result of that tent meeting, my mother, to my dad found his wife later, but my mother got saved in those meetings because of a church plant in Aiken. And because of that church plant, there's still a church there that is thriving right now. I'm so glad. So we don't, we never know when, when it's going to pay off. We don't know. If, if we sometimes get anxious. Why isn't it happening? God, I've been praying, but when it, it'll happen. And even if it doesn't happen in your lifetime, it'll happen because God is faithful. Say that God is faithful. Yes, because he's a good God. He has people on his heart today. He has your kids in eyes view. He has, he sees where you are. He sees where your situation, he sees your heart. You see, the earthly father can be, have great influence if he lives for God, have great influence upon the family. But everyone's got to come to a place, make their own decision. Will we serve the Lord, our God? He's not just my father's, my dad's God. He's my dad. He's my father. He's, he's my Lord. And so that's, the, that's the, the good news of the gospel. When it becomes your own, you make it your own personal relationship with God the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Number one, God did not make robots free will, right? He gives us a choice. No, this story that we're going to read, there's two sons. We're not going to deal with the second one today because that's a whole different message, isn't it? I'll begin to read at about verse 11. Jesus is speaking. He said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the state that falls to me. And he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. There he squandered his estate with loose living. It's like he's saying, I've had it, I'm getting out of Dodge. I'm sick of this place. I'm sick of having to work. I'm sick of the people I live with. I want some adventure. I want to go where there's stuff going on. The father didn't argue with him. Notice that. He didn't beg him to stay. Isn't our Lord much that way. He knows it's not going to work to force us. Listen. Fathering has to be done very wisely. God gives wisdom. God is all wisdom. And to father children is one of the hardest jobs, and also parenting in general, is one of the hardest jobs you can do. How many are in it? I know there's a few of you are in it. Right in the thick of it. Let me say this. God is for your family. God cares about your kids. And so he... There, there's a relationship here. The father says, doesn't say, well, no, no, you can't go. He just, he just gives them a state. And when he spent everything, verse 14, 
and the severe famine occurred in that country, and he, he began to be in need. It was fun for a season. It was, it was a blast. Everything was going well. But the money ran out. And so he, verse 15, he, he goes and attaches himself to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. So just so you know, for, for a Jew, to feed pigs was not good. It was very unholy. It was very humbling. But he went there because there wasn't anywhere else. Wasn't any other jobs available, probably. And he got hungry. And he was longing to fill his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating. And no one was giving him, no one was giving anything to him. Isn't that just like sin? We do things we wouldn't ever thought we've done. Sin has a way of getting us into situations where we are become slaves. Now this young man didn't say all of a sudden, I don't think. He just woke up someday and said, I'm going to leave. He was thinking about this for a while. It may even be partly his brother that he didn't like. It could have been that. We don't only speculate. We just know this is a story about an earthly father who is also a heavenly father. It's a parable. So God doesn't create us to be a forced robot, but he pushes a button and you respond. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now it cuts come from the heart. He wants us to love him because we want to love him. The difference. We can fake it before our man, but we can't fake it before God. But the good news of the story is he remembered. When he hit rock bottom, you know, he was, in his mind, he was humbled and he was willing to work. Just be a slave, not even a son. Just so he could go back. So many times, the problem with humanity is we don't want to admit we have need. We don't want to admit that dad was right. And we want to go our way. Now I know there are not perfect, there's not a, I don't know whether there's a perfect family. You know, maybe we, we, we may think they're perfect families. What is perfect? Well, the best thing we could do to get to becoming perfect is admitting that we need Jesus. Okay, come on. If we're trying to teach our kids the love of God, then they've got to feel the love of God coming from us. Right? It helps. When there's no relationship and there's just a list of rules... And if you slip up, then you're, you're getting consequences. There needs to be rules, but with the understanding, there's more to it. There's a loving, kind, caring father that cares for his son or daughter. Now, free will is huge. You know... Uh, my wife was rummaging through something lately. 
Um, but she found a card. Now this is, I should have said this on Mother's Day, but she found a card that had written to my mom. I, I mean, the, the, in grade school, when you wrote out, did you do that? And, it, and you pasted a flower or something. I just said something like, love mom, love you mom, love ya, Y-A, love your mom, or something like that, Gary. Isn't it interesting? She kept that because somehow it landed in my pile. You know what I'm saying? We are not made robots. We have a free will. And when we get it in our hearts that we get to love God and we get to serve God, and we're privileged to read his word, and we're privileged to meet together in church, and we're privileged on and on and go. We get rid of the have to. And the heart is then in the right place because God knows your heart even more than you know your heart. Free will. It started right in the Garden of Eden, and then Adam and Eve did. They had free will. They could make a choice. Now, there were consequences. But God didn't force them. Whatever we sow, Galatians chapter 6, there's a, God lives by principle of sowing and reaping. On one hand, we can... And Galatians chapter 6, 7, and 8 says, Do not be deceived. What? God is not mocked. Right? Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. For the one who sows to the flesh shall from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap eternal life. There's two roads, one that leads to life, one that leads to death, right? Okay, so the young man comes to his end, his his money runs out. His friends, they're nowhere to be found, right? There's hardly any jobs. Well, at least I can eat the food that the pigs eat. He humbled. He was humbled. But now he was ready. When he came across that field, second point is his father saw him from a distance. Listen. This clues us in. His father saw him from a distance. I think his father was looking for him every day. Every morning he'd get up and scan the field. He's not coming yet. Maybe it was in the evening he'd scan the field again. You've got to try to imagine. This father saw him from a distance. And he felt compassion, so we get our, our, our title, the Father has compassion. How much compassion does he have? Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, 23. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Get a hold of that, friend, because we know we need his compassion. Amen? Every morning, his mercies are new. He has fresh supply, fresh compassion. As he was looking across that field, I can just imagine the excitement. Could it be? Is that him? 
My son was lost, but now he's found. He's come home. And my prayer today, friends, is that if you have someone in your family who needs to come back to Jesus, maybe they're out of fellowship, maybe they've never come to Jesus, maybe they've been hurt, turned off by the church, in some way, whatever, may God be the one that reaches down. Maybe it's through a circumstance. Maybe it's through a miracle. Maybe it's through a sparing of life that awakens a person. Or maybe it's through a person that cares for them. Maybe it's through the word of God or the help of the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's through a dream. We too can come in line with the mercies of God, the everlasting, compassionate Father. The eyes of the Lord, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9 says this, the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, looking for a heart that he may support those whose heart is completely his. Notice the word completely. God wants us all in. Amen. God wants all of us, every part of us. He wants us to be totally committed to him. And so I'm going to share a story. It's a book that was given to me by my friend Vern. And I had heard about this story through another book. And it's about the logging era in Minnesota. The old time logging era. Men were tough. <sighs> they worked hard, but they, they often squandered their, their money. It was a trap. It was so many of the men were taken advantage of. And there was a man called Frank Higgins who began to have a heart for the logging guy, the guys that were in the woods. He himself was a logger. And he earned their respect. He was a broad-shouldered guy. He, would, he could stand it on with the best of them. But Frank was preaching, and he'd go to a camp, and he'd bring songbooks. He'd carry a pack 60, 70 pounds for miles through snow or whatever. And uh, he's starting his service, and he noticed a man, his name was John, that was kind of giving him, wasn't buying in. And Frank kept his guard up and kept on preaching, and he preached on the prodigal son. That was his text. And the man, John, is immediately, as soon as, as Frank was praying, he slipped out. He left the building. Well, Frank goes to look for him. And John is behind the, the, the wood, the cook, 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 the kitchen, you know, just kind of disturbed, distraught, angry. And so they engage in conversation. And John begins to tell him, well, your story was good up until up until when the son came back to the father, he got a welcome. But that didn't happen to me. Because John's father, his father took him by the neck because he was an outlaw. Because he was in sin. And his father took him by the neck and threw him out the door. And that was the reception when the son was trying to get back. And so it hurt him deeply. And Frank Higgins says the words like this, John, you went to the wrong father. And from that moment, John began to weep. He had a miraculously salvation. John, an outlaw, for a, mu a long time, was still wanted by the law. Long story longer, he, the governor was a Christian, Frank took him to the governor, and he was pardoned from all the things that was against him. 
John eventually becomes a preacher himself. God calls him to go out and preach, and he won countless many people. Isn't that a great story of the power of God, the compassion of our Heavenly Father? And see, I'm, I know, and you know as well, there's not a perfect family. But there is a perfect God. There is one who is perfect, that because he's perfect, we can be made perfect through Jesus. We become accepted. We become, we become enabled. The gifts of God himself begin to flow through us. You don't, you don't know exactly what you're going to say in every situation, right? You don't know what you're going to say. You don't know how you're going to handle it, but give God the chance to, sh- to step in and be the God who he is. And so he saw, saw his son coming back across the field. His son says in verse 18, I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired men. Notice the change. Notice the change in the attitude. It was before it was, give me my estate. I'm out of here. Father, it's like I'm sorry. No longer worthy. But he got up and came to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion for him, ran and and embraced him. So his father's taken off the field. Taken across the field. He's running across the field. And so they embraced. And the father said, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Notice, notice, I've sinned against heaven. And see, we can sin against heaven, but when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. See, when we were raising children, it, it was if if the child was trying to hide something, didn't want to admit it, that was worse than the problem itself. You know what I'm talking about? It was trying to get the child to come to a place where they would admit they're wrong. And it's just we're born with this this problem, sin. We we don't have to. Uh, it, it, you put kids together in a room and you see it right away. You know, I'm you know, not that every kid, but a lot of times it's it's they're figuring out their boundaries. They're fig- some some kids are like, "No, oh, that's mine." What? It, it, you can expect that, okay? But we as parents, we're trying to facilitate and model God and how to walk with. And live with other people. It's not all about yourself. And so this, this story, and I don't have time to go into the second son because he had a, he he was freaking out. He was just like just storming mad. He didn't get it. I see kind of where he's coming from, you know. He why should it why should his brother get a party? One, he'd been working all the time, and he never messed up. Hello? God is working in every circumstance right now in your home. If you're calling on the Lord, God can work on behalf of your children and their children because God is for the family. Remember this. God created family before he created the church. Hello? Strong families create strong communities. Strong Christian families create strong Christian communities, which can turn into strong Christian church. And that's what God's design is to change the world. That's God's Designed to change people. That people will see the love of God in authentic realness 
Even though we're not perfect, we are dependent. <laughs> Come on. Even when it's not just like we, we're working on it, we're striving toward it, God is compassionate. God is there to lift you up, encourage you on. So this whole party thing, repentance brought joy. It was because of the son's repentance, because he came back home, because he was lost, now he's found. Did you know that in the Bible that all heaven rejoices over one sinner? Luke's Gospel 15, verse 10, it's in the same chapter. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. Wow. We ought to be throwing some parties. Amen. We, are, we have reason to rejoice. We have reason because we have been forgiven. He has given us a new start. He has given us a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance. God is compassionate. His passion is to seek and to save that which is lost. See, there's other parables that were leading up to this one. The parable of the 99 sheep. You've heard of that. He left the 99 to go find the one that was lost. The parable of the lost coin. Why do we exist as a church? Why, what is the reason God has this coming together? We want to glorify God, number one. But we want to build each other up in their faith. Edify one another. Encourage each other on. The enemy wants to destroy families. Because if he knows he destroys families, he destroys whole cultures and whole communities and whole places of faith. But we're not going to let him get in. Take charge, fathers. You have been God-given authority. Pray over your kids. Pray over your families. Pray over their friends. Pray over their friends that will come to be friends. Huge. Friends are influencers. Friends can be good or bad. You know what I'm saying? Friends can bring them down or bring them up. Now, we want our kids to be able to bring others up. But sometimes the case is that company is not good for them, right? And so we draw boundaries. I'm just throwing these things out. I believe God gives us the tools and the wisdom. Parenting is not an easy job. But it is a good thing. God bless you. God blesses parents. And I want to just lift up dads today that are Sometimes you feel like you fall short. I just, I'm with you. Sometimes you don't feel like you have what you really need. That's when you draw near to the Lord. I believe it's more of who you are than who you are inside that changes people. Then if you say this and say this and then you don't do it yourself, that's the damage. I'm saying just... It's all about our own. We come up with this thing. I don't know how it came up with men's breakfast. Watch your own bobber. Watch your own bobber. In other words, it's easy to, to look and say, well, they're doing things. Nah, I wouldn't do that. You know, but you know, pay attention to your own self. It's not my jo job to judge. It's my job to <coughs> uphold. The king of kings, he's the judge. And these things that we struggle with it called life, there are many things, maybe sometimes 
traps that we can get into. We've got to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Take an inventory. I leave you with this last little story. It was King David who had honored the Lord. It was King David who, who had had a heart after God and worship. It was King David that God raised up to lead many battles in which he was victorious because of his God. But was on one moment, just a moment, he let his guard down and he gazed at a woman bathing and began to plan and strategic. He wanted her for himself. And as a result of that, he was set back. God didn't, you know, wake him up at the moment, but over time the prophet came. As soon as he was found out, what did David do? He broke. Very similar to the prodigal son. As soon as he hit bottom, he admitted his wrong. And he was able to have restoration because he was able to realize that he'd he was wrong, and he admitted it. And thus we have Psalm 51, whom David, no doubt, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, so we can read it for ourselves, says this, verse 10 and 12, through 12, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from thy presence. What was, what was David feeling? He was feeling a distance from God because of sin. Do not take the joy or the Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. When repentance happens, it brings back the joy. When, when, even when one turns back to God, there's joy in the camp. Because let's kill the fatted calf. Let's celebrate. Our son was lost. Does this make sense to you? There's a reason we exist. And so often it is to say a word of encouragement. It may not bring them the salvation yet, but just point the way. Sometimes that's all that's necessary. Amen. I had someone say it like this. Well, actually, it was my uncle. R Linda will be the only one who knows this person and my wife. Bartlett Peterson. He has another whole story of his own. One of the old timers. God used him. He's very gifted, but very humble. And we had some cassettes that were given to us. When he passed, he, he knew I was in the ministry, so he, I think we got a cassette. I would listen. And he was preaching, on, he was preaching to preachers because he was up in the ranks. He says, don't drive the nail clear through the board. That stuck. <laughs> and our, our good brother, Clarence St. John, also preach to preachers. He says, don't blind people with the light of Jesus. You irritate them. Because it's not about us. It's not about being preachy. It's love them for who they are. Jesus invited people. You have a free choice. Hosea said, you don't have to have money. It's free. I like free things. But this is, he bought our salvation. Now it reminds me. Now I won't. Yeah, I will. Horton. 
because he wears his, Viet his, his, his military cap. He's been recognized at the... It happened again yesterday, and they go over and they thank him for his service. How many times that has happened, I don't know. But there's someone else who's Jesus Christ who paid for our penalty. And I was once lost, but now I'm found. He came looking for me when I wasn't looking for him. He waited for me till the timing was right. And as a little boy, I remember the night. I asked Jesus in my heart, and I knew and I knew, I knew, at that age, God is good. Not everyone's had the privilege to grow up in a Christian home. But right now, you have the privilege. With the help of God, you can establish your own legacy. Establish your own household. Amen? You get, you get to build. The Lord builds with you. I want to encourage you, families that you've probably been praying for loved ones for years, don't give up. Don't quit. You never know. And even if it doesn't happen in your lifetime, believe for it. Believe God. Amen. Claim it. Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, we are here as simple people, with simple faith, with childlike faith, believing you, understanding you paid the price. So we accept you. We acknowledge that we cannot save ourselves. In order for us to have a healthy home, we pray you will be, the, be in the house, Lord. You will be in our hearts, Lord. And because you are in our hearts, others will want to want what we have. Influence is what it's all about. To influence someone else, to encourage someone else, to shine the light in a good way, to love as we ought. Keep us from the snares of the enemy. Help us to build with your spirit. Lord, I pray that there will be prodigals that will come home soon. Lord, I pray if we have a prodigal in our, our family that they will return to you. We pray in Jesus' name that you will bind the enemy that's lying and stealing and you will help them to return to you, Jesus. May they find the right company. May they find Jesus. And Savior, we pray. Amen.